Hey everybody, Johnny Cage here, welcoming you back to another game review. This time we are taking a look at Billion Road, developed by Bandai Namco, published by Actil and Bandai Namco, released November 29th, 2018. Today we are looking at its release on the Nintendo Switch. Billion Road is set up as a fictional game show in which you take control of an avatar with the goal of traversing a scaled-down map of Japan, trying to be the first of the competitors to reach a goal city where you'll be rewarded with a large sum of yen, hoping to be the player with the most assets acquired by the end of a set number of years. When you first start the game, you'll be prompted with a few different playstyles, mostly depending on how long you want to spend playing this session, although the game does provide plenty of save slots for you to come back to at a later date, from the quick play skirmish mode to the standard free play mode, as well as a single player tournament. After you've made your choice, you'll select the number of players from 1 to 4, customize your avatar if you would like, and select computer players if needed, each of which has their own difficulty level associated with them. Turn order is then selected, and finally the overall length of the game, which is set in years, translating roughly to one hour of gameplay for every three years selected, with nine years being the max. Once you have selected your preferred playstyle, we are introduced to the hosts of the titular game show, those being Kirara and my new favorite character with gigantism of the head, Okura. After a brief introduction and all players moving to the Tokyo starting location of the board, old Melanoma Head here will throw a dart at an image of Japan which will mark our first goal for the game. As the game begins, each player will take a turn rolling a six-sided dice as well as using items if you have them available to help to improve your roll. The spaces on the board include the usual party game fare of giving you money or taking it away, as well as item spots where you randomly receive one of over 30 different items, and an item shop space where you can purchase a variety of items as long as you have the money for them. Where this game earns the moniker Japanese Monopoly is in the main goal of it, which is to invest in as many properties as possible, increasing your annual revenue at the end of each year which will boost your funds significantly for the following year. And if you happen to land on the same property at a later point in the game, you can boost the investment level up to 3 stars, earning more of a multiplier. Or maybe you have the kind of money that can make it rain and you can just buy up every property a city has to offer, which will double the revenue of the location. And honestly, this is a pretty good idea, as holding onto the money won't lead to anything more than it getting stolen from you. Which leads us to how this game really differentiates itself from other party games with its variety of monsters that will provide you with mostly passive abilities that can help you in a number of ways. The most common way to acquire monsters will be by passing through them on the board in between spaces. Once your turn is complete, they will join your group unless you already have three, in which case you'll have to pick and choose that which are most important to you in your given situation. As well as keeping in mind the color of the monster as you want as many that match the color of the goal in order to get a huge money bonus when and if you reach the goal first. Monster spaces can be found on the map as well, which will randomly provide you with a new monster helper. You can also find monster healing spots and items, which seem to add an unnecessary level of complexity to the game in my opinion, as monster power will activate at the start of your turn, and if you choose not to use it, it can fade away causing you to not have it available when you really need it. These healing spots and items are appreciated for this reason, but a lot of the time it can just result in a wasted roll or item that takes up space. And if you feel the need for more monsters in your life, you can make your way to Monster Island if the warp tiles to this mysterious location are active. You can tell by looking on the top right of the screen for the palm tree with monster face. Here you'll follow a designated path where you can pick up all sorts of monsters before heading to the middle where you'll be brought back to the main board close to where you entered the island in the first place. All that said, with over 50 monsters to experience that have different rarity levels determining how often they appear, monsters do add a fun little strategic element to the game to say the least. One element of the monsters I have yet to touch on is their attack power, as when you first see it, it can come across as a bit confusing as you think you might be battling with other players in some sort of Pokemon-style fight, but the attack power is actually there when a nemesis monster appears suddenly on the map. These giant Godzilla-like monsters will appear without warning and immediately damage any area on the board where if you have any properties, you will unfortunately take a loss that insurance just won't cover. What's worse is the monster will stick around for usually a few months, giving the players a chance to attack it on their turns, with each contributing player getting a monetary bonus when the monster is either defeated or the time limit has elapsed, after which it will cause more damage than when it first appeared. Outside of the Nemesis attacks, there are also other breaks in the action by the hosts of the show, where they'll start chatting about other little bits of info that might affect the output of a property, such as the weather being bad which will affect the yield of agriculture, or this bizarre part where you'll help a chicken shop's video climb the viewership charts by mashing A, taking on Onara Fart and dethroning Hellman Naka along the way. Did I mention that this game is very Japanese? Well, that strangeness aside, once someone finally lands on the goal, which has to be landed on exactly, by the way, none of that Mario Party stopping at a star nonsense here, the character will return back to the studio to be provided with a large reward, which includes the number of monsters you had that matched the color of the goal, as well as the number of consecutive goals that player has reached. 
Additionally, you might also be gifted a follower when you reach the goal, which is different from monsters as they don't count towards the maximum of three you're allowed to carry, and will provide you with additional items or money on your turn. But on the other hand, if you're the furthest from the goal when someone reaches it, you'll get a bad follower who can really make the game difficult for you by stealing your cash, which might end up causing you to sell properties if you go into debt, or removing monsters from your team outright, amongst other things. Fortunately, you can pass a bad follower off on another player if you pass by them on the map, the same way you would go about picking up monsters. And after all that, you repeat the process of reaching goals until the set amount of years is ended, while receiving additional funds at the end of each year based on how well your properties performed, giving you a quick look at how you stack up to the competition on an annual basis, ultimately determining who becomes the winner of Billion Road. Visually, this game is super colorful and can be very busy, which can be a bit overwhelming at times as you can choose your own path to the goal with an arrow always pointing towards the quickest path there. Though since some spots may be more favorable to you than others given your current situation, it can be worth it to deviate from the course, especially if it means dropping some cash to invest in properties. You can even travel by air and sea if you so desire in this game, although you will have to wait until airports are declared open to be able to use them. And while I do like the landmarks that they use to represent different parts of Japan, I would have liked for them to speak a bit more to what a city or region is actually known for, as you do see a lot of ramen shops and buildings that don't help certain places stand out from one another. Otherwise, I did like the amount of customization to your avatar before or even during the game through the options menu, and by playing the single player tournament mode you can earn billion coins which can be used to purchase aesthetic items. The audio in the game is perfectly serviceable and the general upbeat tune on the map to keep spirits up and an accompanying melody to match the tone for what is happening on screen. Billion Road comes in at $3 American with a file size of 1.1GB, playing up to 4 players locally but without any online support. This is a hard game to gauge the value of, as when it first came out on the Switch it was going for $40, which is way too much for the experience it provides, so a permanent decrease of $10 was the way to go there. I suppose I would say this game is for you if you find yourself playing a good amount of party games with friends and family. And while it does have a very Japanese feel to it, it is rather approachable. Not to mention I do see Monopoly on eShop's bestsellers list quite often when it's on sale, so if you've already played that one to death, this could definitely replace it. Now one huge negative that you may have noticed while watching the video I captured is how quickly the dialogue boxes moved along, and for some reason this game was designed that when the computer player is in control, they also control the text boxes, making it difficult to tell what they did on their turn. This is especially a pain for someone playing for their first time or trying to explain the gameplay to somebody new. Being a big fan of all things Japanese, I really wanted to like this game a bit more than I did, but the gameplay does get a bit stale after too long, and the fact that you have to land on goals exactly can make for some frustrating moments where you just wander around the goal and maybe even have another character sneak in to steal it for themselves. I don't think this is a game I can recommend at full price, but something to throw on your wish list, and if it has a good discount, you should get your money's worth as long as you have the people around to play it with regularly. I'm going to give Billion Road a final score of 6 out of 10. It's a fun game in small spurts with some originality to it in the form of the monster mechanic, but not as easy to jump into as other party games available. Thank you everyone for watching, and if you would like to stay posted on new game reviews as I upload them, please click the subscribe button, as well as checking out the link in the description below for my Twitch channel where I stream most evenings. I'll talk to you all later on.